Welcome back, Canaanites. Ever since the release of Halo CE in 2001, among other aspects, one thing that has always set Halo apart from other shooters, sci-fi oriented or not, has been its weapons and vehicles. Today, we'll dive into the lore of the weapons and vehicles at your disposal and that you encounter in Halo Reach. Starting off with weapons, each, with rare exception, fills a role in the sandbox, each with its own clear design and profile, and no two weapons alike. Starting us off is the iconic Assault Rifle. The model used in Halo Reach is the Misria Armory MA-37 Individual Combat Weapon System. Known within the Navy and Marine Corps as the MA-5, the MA-37 entered service in 2437, quickly becoming the standard issue rifle for all service people. Eventually supplanted by the MA-5B and later iterations in the MA-5 series, the MA-37 would continue to be used by the UNSC Army even into the final days of the Human Covenant War. Like all MA series assault rifles, the MA-37 features a bullpup design and is air-cooled, gas-operated, and magazine-fed. The standard magazine holds 32 rounds of 7.62 by 51 mm M118 full metal jacket armor-piercing ammunition. It features a rail-mounted ammunition counter that includes a magnetic compass and can fire 550 rounds per minute with an effective range of 150 meters. In combat, the weapon is effective at tearing through armor and flesh, though, like many UNSC weapons, less effective against energy shields. Beyond short range, the rifle becomes far less effective, and short controlled bursts are recommended in lieu of a mid- or long-range weapon. The Misria Armory M6G Personal Defense Weapon System is the pistol of choice in the UNSC Army. Semi-automatic, recoil-operated, magazine-fed, and large caliber, the 2546 model of the M6G can fire up to 240 rounds of 12.7x44mm M225 semi-armor-piercing high-explosive ammunition per minute. A standard magazine holds 8 rounds. A solid support weapon effective at finishing off enemies softened up by more powerful guns, the M6G can also be issued with a KFA-2 2x smart-linked scope. Generally effective up to 50 meters, the scope can make distant shots much easier. The explosive shells can also make the pistol much more effective against shields and armor plating than one would normally expect. The M392 designated marksman rifle is a Misria Armory produced, gas operated, air cooled, select fire bullpup rifle. Its magazine holds 15 7.62 by 51 mm M118 full metal jacket armor piercing rounds. Adopted into service in 2512, the weapon would serve as the primary armament of the UNSC Army Squad Marksmen and Recon units. Though once used by the Marine Corps and Air Force, the rifle would be largely supplanted by the BR-55, especially after the introduction of its heavy-barreled variant in 2548. The DMR has a built-in iron sight, but can also be outfitted with a rail-attached EVOS-D SmartLink scope capable of 3 times magnification. In combat, the gun is ideal for mid- to long-range engagements. The Misria Armory M45 Tactical Shotgun is a semi-automatic shotgun that features a dual-tubular, non-detachable magazine. Reloaded from the top, the magazine can hold up to six shells of M296 8-gauge ammunition. Some variants of the M45 feature a smart-linked controllable choke, but this is absent in Halo Reach. The M45 is designed for short-range engagements where over-penetration is not desirable, but maximum stopping power is required. The Sniper Rifle System 99 Antimaterial is a Misria Armory sniper rifle that entered service with the UNSC Army in 2460. Eventually, due to its modularity and ongoing manufacturer support, the SRS 99 series would be adopted by all branches in 2521. This rifle fires 14.5 by 114 mm rounds, with each magazine holding up to 4 rounds. These bullets can easily penetrate both Covenant shields and armor, and can even over-penetrate, hitting multiple enemies if shots are lined up properly. The effective range of the SRS-99 is over 1800 meters. The M41 surface-to-surface -surface rocket, medium anti-vehicle slash assault weapon, sometimes referred to as the jackhammer or spanker, is a Misria Armory manufactured heavy ordnance weapon. Though obsolete even before the start of the Covenant War, it has and would remain popular among all branches of the UNSC. 
The dual barrel design allows the M41 to fire two M19 201mm high explosive shaped charge missiles in rapid succession. After both shots have been fired, the two barrels are completely replaced with another set already holding new missiles. This allows for a quick reload in combat and greatly reduces the weight an operator has to carry without throwing the weapon away. The M41 features a 2x SmartLink scope for increased accuracy. The variant in Halo Reach also features an auto-lock system that can lock onto aerial targets, tracking them once the rocket is fired. The Misria Armory Weapon Slash Anti-Vehicle Model 6 Grindel Galilean Nonlinear Rifle, more commonly called the Spartan Laser, is a directed energy anti-vehicle weapon. The nickname comes from the weapon's origins, as it was created alongside the Gungnir variant of Mjolnir Armor as part of Project Gungnir. The Spartan Laser is powered by a BA-53635 PLMD non-removable battery and requires a PP-16979 AMSH charger to recharge that battery. Unfortunately, poor UNSC logistics often result in the weapon shipping without its charger, or vice versa. A fully charged Spartan Laser can shoot four to five times before the battery is depleted. Contrary to popular belief, the Spartan Laser is not a one-hit, one-kill weapon. What appears is a single continuous, albeit brief, laser shot is actually a series of shots in rapid succession. This means that multiple targets can be hit with a single shot in the hands of a skilled operator. During the Human Covenant War, a single Spartan Laser could cost more than four fully armed Warthogs, and the weapon was only readily available for ODSTs and Spartans. The M319 Individual Grenade Launcher is a single-shot, break-action explosives launcher produced by the Misria Armory. It fires high-explosive, dual-purpose 40mm grenades, making it effective against both infantry and light vehicles. The grenade also emits an electromagnetic pulse upon detonation and can be thus effective against Covenant shields or used to disable enemy vehicles. The grenade launcher has two firing modes. The first simply fires a single grenade, which will detonate on its own. The second activates when the user holds the trigger down. This mode allows the user to delay the explosion until they decide to release the trigger, allowing more control over how and when the grenade detonates, thus allowing the setting of traps and even working as a dead man's trigger, the trigger being released when the user is killed, detonating the grenade. Despite entering service in 2263, its simplicity, ruggedness, and firepower has made the grenade launcher a mainstay in the UNSC Army for almost three centuries, longer than any other known weapon currently in use. The M247H Heavy Machine Gun is a commonly used machine gun produced by the Misria Armory for the UNSC. Firing 12.7mm high-velocity explosive rounds, the machine gun is primarily used for suppressing fire, point-to-point -point cover, and in anti-personnel roles, though it is also extremely effective against light vehicles. Air-cooled, gas-operated, electronically fired, and using a drum or linkless feed, the M247H can fire up to 600 rounds per minute at medium to long range. Spartan operators have been known to remove machine guns from their mounts and carry them into battle. When taken into the field in this manner, the M247H can carry up to 200 rounds on its own. Spartan George 052 specifically carried a modified M247 into battle, which lacked the traditional shield plate, but had a heat cover over the barrel. With his back-mounted ammo supply and larger-than-average size, even for a Spartan, George was able to wield his custom M247 far more effectively than the average Spartan. The H-165 Forward Observer Module, commonly referred to as the Target Locator, was a Misria Armory-produced, handheld laser device designed for target acquisition. Once a target was painted with the targeting laser, a small-scale orbital bombardment could be called in from an orbiting starship. The target locator also has a smart length zoom scope for greater range. The M9 High Explosive Dual Purpose Grenade is the Misria Armory-produced, standard-issue hand grenade used by the UNSC. The dual purpose in its name means that it's reliable against both infantry and light-armored vehicles. The grenade is primed by a small button on the handle and has an effective kill radius of 5 meters and a casualty radius of 15. And that covers the UNSC's weapon armory. There are a number of fun guns at a player's disposal, but that only covers a portion of the overall sandbox. Next, let's take a look at the vehicular offerings, both those that the player can drive or fly, and others that you'll just encounter in the game.
The M274 Ultralight All-Terrain Vehicle is a light ground recon vehicle produced by AMG Transport Dynamics. Powered by a 1000cc liquid-cooled, mid-engine mounted, four-stroke, hydrogen-injected ICE, this ATV can reach a max speed of 59 miles per hour or 95 kilometers per hour and traverse most terrains and obstacles without difficulty. The vehicle has no armament, allowing for a single driver and single passenger. Due to its small profile, it can be a difficult target on the battlefield. The M12 Force Applications Vehicle, designed by AMG Transport Dynamics, is an extremely versatile platform that has been in service since 2319. Capable of performing numerous roles, including armament carrier, utility, command and control, ambulance, and reconnaissance, few platforms have been shown to be as reliable and recognizable as the Warthog, to the point that there are even civilian models. Within the UNSC, there are four primary variants that see regular usage. The first is the M12 Light Reconnaissance Vehicle. This version of the Warthog is the most common, fitted with an M41 light anti-aircraft gun nicknamed the Vulcan. Designed to eliminate lightly armored personnel and vehicles and low-flying aircraft, the Vulcan chain gun fires 12.7 by 99mm armor-penetrating rounds at 500 rounds per minute. The M12 G1 Light Anti-Armor Vehicle, more commonly called the Gauss Warthog or Gauss Hog, is a Warthog outfitted with an M68 asynchronous linear induction motor. The M68 fires 25 by 130 mm M485 hypervelocity high density projectiles at just under Mach 40 or 13.7 km per hour. This version of the Warthog is meant primarily for anti vehicle and aircraft activities, but still excels at anti infantry tasks. The magnetic acceleration of the rounds makes for extreme accuracy and penetration over distances of up to 5 miles or 8 kilometers. The M12R Light Anti-Aircraft Vehicle, also called the Missile Warthog, Rocket Warthog, and Rocket Hog, is a variant of the Warthog that features a rear-mounted M79 multiple launch rocket system. Firing six 65mm M4510 ASGM-2 rockets, or Argent V rockets, the M79 is deadly to ground vehicles and even more effective against aircraft, which it can lock onto like the M41 rocket launcher. Finally, we have the M831 Troop Transport, which is exactly what it sounds like. This variant of the Warthog can transport up to 10 passengers to and from the battlefield. The Warthog is powered by a 12L liquid-cooled hydrogen-injected ICE and features a Graf Haptman solar saline actuator that can convert up to 12 liters of fresh, brackish, or salt water into hydrogen fuel. The Warthog can travel at speeds up to 78 miles per hour or 125 kilometers per hour. Though its design leaves the passengers greatly exposed, it also allows for quick entering and exiting, and it can take a great deal of punishment and rolling and still remain operational. The M808C main battle tank, also known as the Scorpion, is manufactured by Chalab's Defense Solutions for the UNSC and is the primary frontline tank used by the UNSC. The M808 line entered service in 2218 and is capable of being operated by a single driver. The Scorpion is outfitted with a main M512 smoothbore high-velocity cannon that fires 90mm tungsten shells, and additional support can be provided by a gunner using the Scorpion's M247T machine gun. Like all UNSC vehicles, the tank and gun can smart link to a troop's standard-issue neural implant. The tank is covered with a ceramic titanium armor and capable of speeds up to 60 miles per hour or 96.5 kilometers per hour. Along with the driver and gunner, up to four troops can ride the tank's tread coverings into battle for additional support and cover fire. The UH-144 Falcon is a versatile multi-purpose utility helicopter primarily used by the UNSC Army. Manufactured by Misria Armory, the default model of the Falcon is an economic alternative to the standard Pelican dropship used mainly for short-range troop transport and deployment. The Falcon was introduced in 2497 and features a nose-mounted M638 autocannon which fires 20mm rounds. Alongside the basic UH-144 model, there are two additional variants of the Falcon. The UH-144S is a support Falcon that features side-mounted M247H machine guns. The UH-144A is an attack Falcon with side-mounted M460 automatic grenade launchers. 
The grenades used are the same as those used by the M319 individual grenade launcher. All variants of the Falcon can seat up to five passengers, including the gunners in the case of the support and attack Falcons. The Dropship 77 Tactical Aerospace Lifter, or Pelican, is a Misria Armory produced personnel, vehicle, and equipment transport capable of orbital transit flight. Powered by four hybrid fusion engines, two primary and two secondary, the Pelican is capable of transporting up to 10 troops to and from the battlefield. The bay, or blood tray as some troops call it, has an onboard weapons locker that can carry enough armament for 30 troops. In addition to troops, the Pelican can also carry vehicles and additional arms into battle via its aft overhang. These can be as small as weapon containers or mongooses, and up to the massive 66-ton Scorpion tanks. The D-77 TAL variant of the Pelican has limited armament itself, usually only deploying with its nose-mounted M370 autocannon. The YSS-1000 prototype anti-ship spaceplane, commonly known as the Sabre, is a space fighter being developed in secret by the UNSC Air Force. Development started in 2547, though the fighter proved too expensive to enter full production in light of the loss of the inner colonies by this time and a shortage of skilled fighters. Nevertheless, development continued and the Sabre would see limited action during the war, though it remained secret the entire time with three separate administrations denying the program's existence. Spartan B-312, who would later join Noble Team as Noble 6, was one of the program's pilots, using the fighter in a counterinsurgency op on Memor on May 10th, 2552. Following the initial invasion of Reach, Sabres would become one of the few effective options against the Covenant. Sabres are armed with two M1024 ASW-AC 30mm machine-linked autocannons, a type of coil gun, and two ST Medusa missile delivery systems, the latter capable of locking onto its targets. The Sabre also includes energy shields, one of the first UNSC craft to do so. Wrapping things up is the GATL-1 interceptor-slash-strike fighter commonly known as the Longsword. Manufactured by the Misria Armory, the Longsword is the main starfighter in service with the UNSC Navy and Air Force. Longswords are crewed by four people, a pilot, co-pilot, navigator, and systems operator, and can utilize an AI, though this is optional. The Longsword has several variants in service, but the one seen in Halo Reach is the Air Force's C-712 model, a smaller version of the fighter. This version is armed with twin M9109 ASW-AC 50mm machine-linked autocannons and four ASGM-10 missile delivery systems. And that concludes the major weapons, vehicles, and aircraft that you can either use or just encounter in Halo Reach. At its time, Reach was the biggest sandbox Halo had to offer, and in many ways still is. In future videos, we'll cover the lore for the Covenant side of things and more, but for now, let me know what you thought in the comments below. Until next time, this has been Halo Cannon. Thanks for watching, everyone. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please consider subscribing, and if you really love me, hit that notification bell and leave a thumbs up. These both really help out the channel. I wouldn't be where I am now without your views and support, so once again, thank you. Keep on being awesome, Cannonites.